The Great Depression is a topic that is often taught in a macro sense, spiraling deflation leading to unemployment, leading to government action, and so on. This simulation is designed to give students a micro sense of the Depression as they struggle to balance family budgets. The Great Depression of the 1930s was a part of a larger global financial crisis. Most Americans didn't understand what caused the Depression, but all Americans had to deal with its effects in their daily lives. With unemployment at more than 25% and currency values rising and banks no longer secure, every family had to cut costs and increase revenues. To prepare for the simulation, copy each family's set of materials on its own color of paper. If possible, copy the materials on cardstock and laminate them so they can be reused. You will also need some poster paper and markers. This simulation is designed and works best with six families, each with five members. For large classes, you can duplicate one or more families or add an extra member to some families and ask the extra member to be the recorder or the reporter. For smaller classes, you can make the family group smaller than five and have students play more than one role in the family if necessary. For really small classes, you may want to remove one of the families from the game. Use the Butcherville USA handout to explain the scenario and set the activity up. Divide the students into families. Give each family their budget and family scenario sheet. Once they have had a chance to review those, pass out the roll cards and instruct students to take turns, starting with the youngest family member sharing their new information with the family. Your parents have been talking about economic changes and it scares you. Maybe you can ask your boss for more hours at Rob's malt shop. Maybe you could work full time. Bad news, Stanley Furniture Factory is cutting back and I no longer have my job, so. <laughs> The only solution you can see is to take the twins out of school and plant the field, plant back the field that you were trying to, that you were going to follow this year. You'll have to just try to ignore the almanac prediction of bumper crops and lower prices again this year and hope that everyone else gets hit by the hail. As a family, they should discuss the changes they will make to deal with the situations described in the roll cards. When students have finished, have one member from each family introduce their family to the class and share some of the decisions that they had to make. So um, our monthly income before was 147 and now it's 110. So we kind of had to cut out all of like the entertainment stuff. And the youngest kid has like a speech impediment, so the therapist recommended that we double the amount of sessions, but we can't afford that, so we're going to keep it the same. We cut farm expenses and family expenses by half. Which means that we now have a dollar to spend each month on our family. Right. Following the sharing of families' decisions, use the circular flow visual to help students understand that one person's expenditure is another person's income. Show the ripple effect visual and give a few examples of how one decision made by a family has a ripple effect impacting the income and expenditure of someone else. If your families are representative of what's happening, What's happening to the overall level of income in Butcherville? It's going down. You can just feel it shrinking. We call it, I mean, what you can see kind of experiencing in here is, is what we refer to as a ripple effect, that the decisions, you know, one family has impacts another family, and those decisions impact another family. And so what I would like you to, I'm going to have each family do is grab a piece of paper off of one of these poster pads, and then grab a marker from this, a couple markers from this frisbee here. Hand out the poster paper and have each family create their own ripple effect diagram using some of the decisions they made in the game. Okay, so we fired the cleaning lady, the gardener, the receptionist, then the babysitter. So that's four people in the town who aren't getting any money from us. So just draw an arrow and then write their name or whatever. Murder. All of our consumers. Use their examples to illustrate the paradox of thrift. Um, paper boys making less income and newspaper companies. Here's the decision to get rid of the receptionist. So their family, less income, less expenditures. Um, and then what might be something that the receptionist family would have spent money on that they would cut? Maybe clothing. 
So can you describe, is there any way you can kind of generalize about, uh, about income and expenditures among members in an economy? Think about how those are related to each other. How are income of families and expenditures of other families related? Um, when the expenditures of one family decreases, it decreases the income of another. She said when the expenditures of one family decreases, it decreases the income of other families. Did you see that happening in here? In hard economic times, people try to protect themselves from additional hardship by cutting back on consumption. But those same prudent measures for individuals make people worse off overall during the Great Depression. Thus, the paradox. By the end of this activity, students will understand that behind all the macroeconomic variables of the Great Depression were individuals making tough economic choices.